The exact location of the pain is one of the most important factors when you want to know what is going on in your shoulder. The reason is that the area of the pain, together with the other symptoms, is highly predictive for the diagnosis and the possible treatment options. So in the next minutes, I will describe the 12 most common pain zones in the shoulder, what they precisely mean in terms of what is the problem, and which treatment options there could be. Number one, and by far the most common cause of shoulder pain, impingement syndrome. In impingement syndrome, which is in fact an umbrella term, a number of structures become squeezed each time the arm is brought above shoulder level, which causes inflammation or even damage to these structures. The structures involved are the subacromial bursa and the rotator cuff tendons. These become then trapped or crushed between the humeral head and the lower edge of the acromion, each time when the arm is lifted above the shoulder. As a consequence, inflammation or damage to these structures occurs, leading to, in progressive order, subacromial bursitis, rotator cuff tendinitis, rotator cuff partial tear or rotator cuff full tear. The treatment of impingement consists of physiotherapy with exercises that aim to restore the muscle balance around the shoulder so that the squeezing or entrapment effect disappears. Sometimes injection therapy can be of further help and surgery may be indicated when there is a tear in the rotator cuff tendons. 2. Rotator cuff calcification in rotator cuff calcification, the painful area is almost the same as in impingement syndrome, but now the pain is somewhat more constant and not so much exacerbated by lifting the arm above the shoulder. The diagnosis is easily confirmed with an x-ray or an ultrasound because the calcification is then easily visible. The treatment consists of shockwave therapy in order to disintegrate the calcification or this can also be done by needle or injection therapy. Sometimes keyhole surgery may be needed for removal of the calcification. 3. Biceps tendinitis. In biceps tendinitis, there is inflammation and pain over the long tendon of the biceps, which runs here in the front of the shoulder. The treatment is to reduce or stop all pain-provoking activities, combined with anti-inflammatory measures and physiotherapy to improve the movement pattern of the shoulder and to strengthen the shoulder girdle. 4. Acromioclavicular joint arthritis. In AC joint arthritis, there is inflammation of the small joint between the acromion and the clavicula. This is usually the result of a previous trauma to the AC joint, for example after a fall on the shoulder, as you can see here, with injury to the AC ligaments. Or it may be caused by excessive shoulder use or because of age-related wear and tear. Often the pain can be provoked by the crossover test, where you bring the elbow to the other shoulder and by doing so, you elicit the pain. The treatment consists of temporary avoidance of the pain-provoking activities, local ice applications, combined with standard painkillers or anti-inflammatory medication, and sometimes corticosteroid injection into the AC joint. In some rare cases, surgery may be needed. 5. Distal clavicle osteolysis, also called vanishing clavicula. Here, the pain is somewhat slightly more medial, over the outer edge of the clavicle. This condition is usually the consequence of heavy, repeated shoulder work, which causes resorption of the lateral edge of the collarbone. Also here, the crossover test is positive and provokes the pain. The treatment is the same as for AC joint arthritis. Temporary avoidance of the pain-provoking activities, local ice application, paracetamol or anti-inflammatory medication, sometimes a corticosteroid injection into the AC joint, and in some rare cases, surgery. 6. Slap lesion. With slap lesion, the pain is located deep in the shoulder and is provoked by vigorous shoulder movement, like when throwing or smashing a ball. It is caused by a tear at the anchorage side of the biceps tendon. The treatment depends on the severity of the tear. Sometimes physiotherapy with strengthening exercises and optimization of the movement pattern of the shoulder may suffice. But in more severe cases, Surgery may be needed. 7. Frozen shoulder, also called adhesive capsulitis. In frozen shoulder, the whole shoulder is painful, in the front, the side and the back. But more importantly, the shoulder also feels very stiff. The reason is that the capsule around the shoulder has shrunk, which creates tightness and loss of mobility. That's where the name frozen shoulder comes from. The treatment depends on the stage of the disease and evolves from gentle physiotherapy with gentle stretches combined with anti-inflammatory medication 
to hydrodilation and steroid injection, and sometimes surgical manipulation. 8. Suprascapular nerve entrapment. In this condition, the nerve that runs over the top of the shoulder blade, the suprascapular nerve, is inflamed or compressed, and this causes pain, and sometimes also muscle weakness in the area over the shoulder blade. The treatment is dependent of the cause. In case of overload and inflammation, temporary rest for the shoulder with physiotherapy afterwards may suffice. In case of compression, surgery may sometimes be required to release the nerve. 9. Posterior capsule tightness or GERD, which stands for glenohumeral internal rotation deficit. In this condition, the posterior capsule of the shoulder is shortened, which limits internal rotation and also adduction of the shoulder, as you can see here. The treatment consists of physiotherapy with so-called sleeper stretches and cross-body stretches. 10. Scapular dyskinesia. In scapular dyskinesia, the shoulder blade does not move as it should, usually because of an imbalance of the muscles that stabilize the shoulder blade. As a result, the scapula takes an abnormal position, which we call scapular winging. You can see that here. The treatment consists of physiotherapy with exercises to correct the position and movement pattern of the shoulder blade. 11. Cervicobrachialgia. In cervicobrachialgia, there is irradiating pain from the neck to the shoulder, sometimes even to the arm. This is usually caused by compression of the cervical nerve root, either by a cervical hernia or a bulging disc, as you can see here, or by a bony spur at the level of the cervical spine. The treatment depends on the severity. Sometimes physiotherapy with decompression of the nerve and strengthening exercises may suffice, but in more severe cases, local injection therapy or radiofrequency ablation may be needed, and sometimes even surgery to remove the compression. Finally, and important, 12. Referred cardiac pain. In the left shoulder, the left shoulder, the presence of deep, somewhat vague shoulder pain, which is somewhat hard to define, may be referred shoulder pain coming from the heart and therefore indicative of a cardiac problem. That is one of the reasons why, in case of shoulder pain, you always should see your doctor. All the things I just have explained are indeed just a rough guidance for you as a patient so that you may already have some background insights. And certainly in case of symptoms like local hardness, redness, fever, sickness, abnormal tiredness, short of breath, not feeling well, or other general health symptoms, or when the pain or discomfort persists longer than four weeks, you definitely should see your doctor, and as a matter of fact, best even in the short term. Thank you for watching.